Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, connecting with us from all over the world. My name is Victoria Papp. I am a smart city consultant at the ITU, and it is with great pleasure I welcome you all to the STI Forum side event on leveraging the metaverse in cities to achieve the SDGs. This episode is jointly organized by ITU and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as part of the ITU's webinar series on digital transformation and the UN Multi-Stakeholder Forum on Science, Technology, and Innovation for the Sustainable Development Goals. I see many participants connected today, and I look forward to your active participation during our discussion. I invite you all to drop a quick message in the chat box icon seen at the bottom of your screens, stating your name and the country from which you are connecting from. Today, while the metaverse is still in its nascency, there is already potential for consumers, businesses, organizations, and cities to advance their pathway towards achieving the sustainable development goals. As a metaverse evolves, safe and meaningful innovation environments needed to establish to create a positive impact. This episode aims to directly address and highlight the promising developments in the metaverse for accelerating progress towards the SDGs. We have an excellent list of panelists for today's discussion. We're also very privileged to have in our midst some very distinguished speakers. We have His Excellency Mr. Abdulaziz bin Mohammed Al Wazil, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to the United Nations in New York, and Sezo Ono, Director, Telecommunication Standardization Bureau, ITU. So without further delay, I would like to give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Abdulaziz bin Mohammed Al Wazil to give his opening remarks. Over to you. Mr. Uh, Abdulaziz, you're, uh, you're welcome to take the floor now and uh, provide your opening remarks. Please let us know if you're able to turn on your, your mic and camera. Your Excellency, are you able to, uh, to join us? Thank you everyone for your patience while we wait for His Excellency to join us. Okay, in the meantime, while we have His Excellency, Mr. Abdulaziz bin Mohammed. Yes, yes, can you yeah. hear me now? Yes, thank you very much. Your floor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and uh, my apology. This is a technical problem. Uh, can you hear me? 
Can you yes, hear we now? can hear you. All right. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Uh, first of all, my apology for uh, this technical issue. I think we, we did have a, a, a problem with the access, uh, accessing the audio and the, the, the video. But anyway, Excellency, distinguished guests, uh, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to address you today in, the, in this important event to highlight the uh, progress uh, in le leveraging the metaverse in achieving the SDGs and following to uh, very successful I ITU uh, events uh, on the metaverse uh, held in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Technologies, innovation, and development has been at the uh, forefront of the Kingdom's Vision 2030 uh, with the accelerated efforts in the leveraging technology and progress of uh, innovation, taking advantage of the emerging trends in different sectors. As a part of our vision and collective efforts, Saudi Arabia uh, hosted both the first ITU forum on Metaverse and the first meeting of the ITU focus group on Metaverse uh, that demonstrated the strong interest in the topic from experts around from the, the experts around the world. I want to thank the ITU for maintaining the momentum of organizing this webinar to, to help us imagine better future a future where metaverse enabled cities transform the way we live, work, and play, while accelerating the achievements of the sustainable development goals. We also commend the ITU roles to serve as a collaborative platform for governments, industry, academia, and civil societies to come together and discuss some of the most pressing technological issues. In conclusion, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is a strong supporter of the ITU, and we look forward to our continued engagement, including on the important topic, topic of metaverse standardization, and look forward to a fruitful conversation and discussions by our esteemed panelists. I thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the wonderful opening remarks. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Sezo Ono, Director, Telecommunication Standardization Bureau, to give us his opening remarks. His Excellency, Mr. Abdulaziz bin Mohammed al Wasser, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, to the United Nations in New York. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 25th episode of the ITU Digital Transformation Webinar Series, which is being organized as a part of the UN Science, Technology and Innovation Forum. Today's side event is on the exciting topic of the metaverse and its role in helping cities achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Today, we are also officially launching the ITU Executive Briefing on the Metaverse. It is a collaborative effort of more than 40 experts. Briefing contributors represented views from Africa, Asia, and the Americas and Europe, as well as industry, government, academia, and UN agencies. The briefing provides a concise overview of the technologies that underpin metaverse, as well as the key challenges and opportunities. To get a copy of this executive briefing, I encourage you to visit our website, itu.int slash metaverse, and learn why the metaverse has such transformative potential. The metaverse could enhance education, improve the livelihood of inhabitants in cities, and generate income. It could provide access to public and private services, 
strengthen global cooperation and community building, boost citizen engagement, and enable new cooperative and collaboration models. It is up to us to ensure the metaverse is developed in a way which benefits all people. The ITU continues to be at the forefront of ensuring frontier technologies like the metaverse developed in a way that supports the achievement of the SDGs. In December 2022, ITU membership unanimously approved the creation of a new focus group on metaverse, which is open to all. The focus group is working on analyzing the technical requirements of the metaverse to identify fundamental enabling technologies in areas from multimedia and network optimization to digital currencies, Internet of Things, digital twins, and environmental sustainability. Over its long history, the ITU has worked with partners to support development of many innovative technologies and activities. The first ITU forum on Metaverse in Saudi Arabia was a great example of this. The forum on Metaverse brought together over 650 experts from around the world to discuss important emerging technology issues related to the Metaverse. I want to thank the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for their continued support. Our digital transformation webinar series offers an additional avenue open to all for us to discuss emerging technology topics like the metaverse. I want to thank all of the participating experts for joining today and wish you a successful webinar. Thank you for your attention. Wonderful. Thank you kindly, Mr. Seiza Ono, for your insightful opening remarks. Before we delve into the heart of today's discussions, please take note of how the session will be run. All questions from the audience will be taken during the Q&A session after all presentations have been delivered. Participants can submit their questions by typing in the Q&A icon seen at the bottom of your screens. Kindly note, uh, the event is being recorded and the recording will be made available on the event website. All the presentation materials as well will also be made available on the website after the event. So with that, I would like now to invite Ms. Radia Funa, futurist and creator of the X Human Theory to lead us through the next session on building smart sustainable cities in the metaverse opportunities and challenges. Radia Funa is an internationally recognized theorist whose ex-human theory explores the impact of frontier technology on institutional behavioral norms to help inform a framework of understanding that can guide technology companies, their regulators, and the general public. Radia is the founder and principal at the consulting firm Build, Build and Blaze. So with that, Thank you so much. I'd like to pass it over to Ms. Radia Afuna. Over to you. Thank you, Victoria, for that wonderful introduction. And um, hello, everyone. Let me start by thanking His Excellency, Director Uno, my fellow experts on the panel, and of course you. Thank you all for joining us today. In addition to those lovely things that Victoria said, I'm thrilled to also serve as vice chair of the ITU Metaverse Working Group on Security, Data, and Protection of Personally Identifiable Information. And I have the distinct honor of moderating today's webinar, which I'm so looking forward to. Although we're still in the process of defining what the metaverse is, as the world becomes increasingly dig digital, the metaverse is emerging as a new frontier of social and economic interaction allowing people to create, connect, and collaborate in ways that were previously thought impossible. Today, we are exploring the exciting opportunities and sometimes daunting challenges 
of building sustainable cities in the metaverse. Cities are home to over half of the world's population and face complex challenges in terms of social, economic, and environmental sustainability. The metaverse offers unique opportunities to address these challenges by enabling new forms of collaboration, innovation, and participation. That is why I am really excited to hear from our diverse group of experts and practitioners today who will share their insights, experiences, and vision for the metaverse in cities. I'm also excited to hear from you, our audience, so that together we can inspire new ideas, collaborations, and actions that can contribute to a more sustainable and inclusive future. Now let's get started. Allow me to introduce our expert panelists for today who will each give a brief presentation. We will then follow these presentations with a conversation at the very end. Our first panelist is Christina Yunjung, who is a metaverse pioneer. She advises governments and UN agencies on how to use the metaverse, AI, and smart cities technologies to improve the real world. He is a vice chair of the ITU Metaverse Working Group on Sustainability, Accessibility, and Inclusion. And I love that we get to work together on this. Christina, I'm happy to start with you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, could we have the slides on display, please? Thank you. Next one. Um, David Attenborough is a world famous broadcaster and naturalist, and uh, he's also my role model. He said, right now we are facing man-made disasters of great scale and uh, our greatest threats, perhaps in many thousands of years, that's climate change. I feel very strongly, especially last year worldwide, we have very frequent extreme weathers taking place all over the place. And I think it is really time we are working together to use technology such as metaverse to ensure our environment is really sustainable for our future generations. Next slide, please. Some people will tell me that uh, metaverse is a new reality. Next slide. But if we're looking at its whole history, the whole idea was almost like 40 years since 1992 coined by Neil Stevenson in the snow crash. And the world's first metaverse is created in 2003 by Linden Lab, a San Francisco based company called Second Life. So that was 20 years ago. So the whole idea is actually nothing new. And uh, I think many experts really want to figure it out. How do we define the metaverse? I think according to Neil Stevenson, he's very much envisaged a virtual world driven by VR interface, but that was 40 years ago. Nowadays, increasingly metaverse has become a convergence of a whole new range of technology coming together to form the next generation of the internet, which is more immersive, interactive, and intuitive. So I really like the idea proposed by John Radoff in building the metaverse when he talked about seven different layers of the metaverse, all the way from IT infrastructure, say 5G, 6G, semiconductor chips, to like spatial computing. So we're talking about 3G engines, edge computing, and different user interfaces, all the way to traditional, like um, gaming, like eSport, etc. So as you can see, metaverse is not one technology, it's a whole range of things, including AI, which has recently become a very hot topic. Next slide. I was very lucky to start it, the journey on the metaverse since 2006, when I was uh, doing my master dissertation in the UK at Loughborough University. So I was looking at use Second Life, the world's first metaverse platform to develop international strategies for universities worldwide. Then I was lucky to get a full scholarship to continue my research in civil engineering departments, looking at how to use digital twins in the metaverse to simulate and optimize real world construction engineering architectural projects, which can also be applied to smart city environments. Next slide. So as you can see, what we have been through since Facebook changed its name into Meta in 2021 is actually the second wave for mass adoptions of the metaverse. Next. Like any kind of new technology, the metaverse is going through this kind of so-called hype circle. 
But I think when we really looking at the real world user case, what's really applicable for the metaverse is for things which are too dangerous or too expensive or too difficult to apply in the real world. So actually that's perfect for smart city developments, especially looking at how to you know, support UN sustainable development goals. Next slide. Worldwide, we can see there is a number of cities who are already pioneering to do different interesting things about metaverse for the smart city. Next one. For example, I really want to congratulate Mr. Ambassador and Saudi Arabia for your absolutely pioneering work in setting up the NEON project, creating the world's first cognitive digital twin metaverse platform to integrate a whole range of different technology to really demonstrate how the future of city can look like, which is very exciting. Of course, there are other cities. Next slide. For example, the Shanghai municipal government is using digital twin to looking at traffic control. And in the United States, in Santa Monica, they are using metaverse to gamify its shopping district to create and boost local economy. In London, where I am located now, we're using metaverse to really support culture promotions worldwide, which has been proved very efficient. And in New York City, they're using digital twin to looking at traffic control, provide better you know, traffic management. Next one. And also in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, they are really looking at a holistic metaverse strategy for job creations to attract top talents, entrepreneurs, investors to create a top metaverse strategy of the world. And of course, South Korea, especially in Seoul, they are using metaverse to looking at how it can use to provide better public service for the younger generation for access to the library and for different utility, which are very exciting. And of course, in Wellington, they are focusing very much on looking at uh, how to provide better parking slots, traffic control, and so is Singapore. Next one. So I think what we really need to consider is we already have a number of very efficient user case for city governments to use metaverse related technology to support smart city developments in line with UN sustainable goals. But there are a number of, I will say, top three challenges and opportunities we need to look into moving forward. The first one, next one, is the arrival of quantum computing. Next slide. Some of you probably has uh, remember in 2019, there is a major news uh, released by Google. They claim that they have achieved quantum supremacy. What that means is they have developed a quantum computer which can achieve 158 million times faster calculation than any existing supercomputer. What that means is to solve one really complicated like algorithm and calculation, which will traditionally take 10,000 years to solve. And now with this supercomputer powered by quantum, it can only take four minutes. So that's very significant. And of course, last year, I was extremely excited by the Nobel Prize winners in physics because the three top scientists who got Nobel Prize winner in physics were given to three scientists specialized in quantum entanglement, which is a very important part of quantum physics. And that's going to have a major impact on the development and commercialization of quantum computing move forward. So in the same year, we see the news that the US President Joe Biden visited one of the world's largest leading player of quantum computing, which is IBM, and to congratulate them to put 20 billion US dollars to develop all quantum computing related research developments as well as commercialization. And Mr. Biden, Mr. President, he believed that that's going to help America to lead the next generation of computing power of the world. The reason I say this is significant is we all know that in order to power a really smooth 
and high resolution simulation of the metaverse. According to Intel, we need at least another 1,000 times more computing power. And uh, currently, we don't have that big amount of computing power, but quantum computing can be the solution. And also, I'm very delighted to hear from the CEO and chairman of IBM, who gave a speech at the World Economic Forum. And he personally believed that the commercialized quantum computing can be available as early as 2025. And uh, maybe for wider adoption, it will be 2030. So we are not far away. And the uh, metaverse will benefit tremendously from this massive computing power. That's the first major like opportunities, but also it's also massive challenges because we all know a lot of the password and um, uh, encryptions ca our current computer system uh, are using will be very easily cracked by quantum computing. So worldwide, there are lots of companies who are looking at how to use different technology to provide quantum resistance algorithm to ensure that kind of cybersecurity task is sorted. So it's like one side of the two coins. We have a major opportunity, but we also need to manage major risk. Next one. Another area, as uh, many of you probably have uh, noticed, is the rise of generative AI, especially chat GDP, since November last year. Some people tell me that uh, they believe the year 2022 is the year of metaverse, where we see really exciting numbers and the business talking about 13 trillion US dollars by 2030, as uh, discovered by City Banking Group. However, since ChatGPT suddenly sweep around the world for its really friendly user interface, and some people start to say, actually, guess what? The hype and excitement about Metaverse seems to die down a little bit. And now ChatGDP and generative AI is the new hot word for year 2023. Next slide. I think actually there is not necessary a competition between generative AI and the metaverse. Generative AI will become a really powerful tool to support even faster adoption of the metaverse moving forward. And the reason I'm saying that is because it will enable much, much faster, cheaper, and bigger like uh, content creation in the metaverse. A lot of the apps we have seen so far is around text or text to code, text to image, text to speech, or text to video. But I think the most important part is actually we start to see where our app has been generated using text to 3D virtual models, which are very powerful. Next slide. I can tell you two really amazing examples using generative AI to provide text to high resolution 3D. And the first one is created by Google in September last year called Dream Fusion. And uh, basically, if you put in a simple text, let's say, give me a squirrel, and then it can create a squirrel in 3D uh, in about 1.5 hours. So that was quite cool. And they have a whole database of different like um, uh, mesh that you can use. And since I'm moving very fast, in January this year, NVIDIA, uh, put forward a new platform called Magic 3D. So what they can do compared with Dream Fusion is they can create high resolution text 3D uh, in only half of the time in 40 minutes. And the resolution is much, much better. So imagine we can use this technology, you know, moving forward, there will be, we can potentially have a text to digital twin or text to metaverse. And uh, the whole idea about metaverse will not only be like very expensive or like time consuming, everyone can create their own metaverse. So that'll be quite cool. Next slide. And then we will need to discuss a really serious issue about environment impact. There has been a lot of debates about whether the existence of metaverse will help to address climate change. And uh, there are some really important examples for example, the European Commission has put 150 million euro to develop a digital twin of the earth to fight climate change, to prevent extreme weather, which is definitely good for our environment. But at the other side, 
we also need to calculate the energy consumption of the massive simulations cause like you know carbon footprints and also tra training generative ai is not very environmentally friendly and the issue we're facing now is both sides trying to do something to help the environment but there is not yet a global empirical analysis to looking at how we can make a balance to ensure the whole advances of technology, such as metaverse, AI, et cetera, is going to really have more positive impacts altogether. So maybe that's something urgently need to be done quickly. Next slide. However, we already have a really amazing solution to address the environment impacts of metaverse and other kind of technology. So in February this year, a paper was published in Nature magazine talking about the US and the Japanese scientists. They have developed a new way to use non-radioactive nuclear fusion to provide the future of clean technology and clean energy. And based on their research, if we can implement that at full scale, this technology can power our planet for another 100,000 years which means all kinds of like, uh, you know, technology and energy related issues can be beautifully solved. Next slide. So I think in order to achieve UN sustainable development goals, we need to have a holistic review on how metaverse can fit in in each of the different 17 goals moving forward. And that will require a lot of international collaboration. Next slide. I'm very happy to see that ITU has already taken a lead in doing this by supporting amazing initiatives such as Global Prize and the VR competition. And I think we probably need to do that on a regular basis and maybe incorporate this in the next COP, uh, which will take place in UAE. So collectively, I think we can really use technology like Metaverse to help develop our smart city and achieve UN Sustainable Development Goals. Next slide. So I want to conclude my speech by quoting my role model, Dave Attenborough. And he said, human beings are the greatest problem solver our planet has ever known. We're just yet to apply ourselves to this problem with the scale and urgency it requires. So I'm asking all of you, let's do it together and we can make our world really sustainable for our generation to come. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Christina, for kicking us off with this informative presentation, and especially for touching on the definition of the metaverse, illustrating the exciting ways in which cities are leveraging metaverse-related technology, the unleashing power of quantum computing, and the impacts to the environment. I know you have to leave us early today. We will miss you. <laughs> I miss you already. And we, <laughs> and we appreciate the time you have given us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Ciao, ciao. Bye. You too. Bye. I will now introduce Ahmad Binder. Ahmad is a public policy professional currently serving as policy innovation director at the Digital Corporation Organization, which we'll talk about a little later. Ahmad, the floor is yours. Thank you, Radia. Thank you very much. And really um, wonderful presentation by Christina. So, um, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, your excellencies and distinguished guests. Uh, may I request you to uh, please uh, put up my slides as I requested earlier? Would that be possible? Um, I'm, I'm waiting to see my slides. I see a scene, I see a screen share, but I don't see any slides. Um, can you help yeah. us? Me neither. Just give us a few minutes, just a slight technical glitch. We should be able to pull it up in a few minutes. Thank you so much. Okay. Wonderful. All right. 
Thank you very much. Um, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to your excellency and distinguished guests. I'm Ahmed Pinder from the General Secretariat of Digital Cooperation Organization. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to join you today and discuss this exciting topic. Um, and I said Christina had made a very, very uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, and some of, the top, uh, some, some of the topics that I'm going to talk about, uh, she has uh, covered a bit of that as well. Uh, I would first like to commend the role of ITU in facilitating these important discussions and serving as an um, uh, as an uh, as, as a collaborative platform uh, for the key st stakeholders to come together. Next slide, please. Let me start by introducing the DCO. DCO is a global intergovernmental organization headquartered in Riyadh that aims to enable digital prosperity for all by accelerating the inclusive and sustainable growth of the digital economy. DCO covers the digital economy horizontally, and we are strong advocates for empowering youth, women, and entrepreneurs to play their role in shaping our digital future. The DCO strategy is designed to contribute to the acceleration and advancement on the SDGs through cooperation. Next slide, please. Our current membership includes 13 countries spread across Africa, Middle East, Asia, and Europe that collectively represent around $2 trillion of GDP, a population of above 600 million people, and more than 70% of whom are under the age of 35. We also have a growing network of observers and knowledge partners that, that represent the private sector, international organizations, NGOs, academia, and civil society. DCO has been granted the status of an observer at the UN General Assembly, and we are a sector D member of ITU. Next slide, please. Now, coming to the sustainable development goals um, as the focus of our discussion today, unfortunately, the progress on the SDGs has stagnated over the last three years. And this is due to the shift of focus towards fighting the pandemic and uh, dealing with other global challenges. There's an urgent need to accelerate this progress, and we believe that digital technologies have a key role to play in this. Next slide, please. This is because the digital technology powered by the transformative techn uh, technologies uh, has shown unprecedented growth and great potential. The digital economy is growing twice as fast as the traditional economy and is primed to capture about a quarter of global GDP by 2025. Metaverse, being one of the frontier digital technologies, is showing great, great economic potential. With the investments of over 120 billion in 2022, Metaverse is estimated to generate $800 billion of revenue in 2024 that could reach up to 5 trillion by 2030 as per some estimates. It is important, it is important that we harness the power of digital technologies like Metaverse to accelerate the progress on sustainable development while we ensure that the digital economy in general grows sustainably. Next slide, please. To this end, DCO suggests a preliminary framework to map a shared understanding of what the sustainable growth of digital economy could look like. This framework across the verticals of planet, society, and businesses helps exploring ways to ensure that the digital economy grows sustainably and to leverage the transformative technologies like metaverse towards achieving the SDGs. You can see this in a few examples that are mentioned on the screen. Next slide, please. Now, coming to our today's focus on the cities, the UN Environment Program raises a few challenges to sustainability of, sustainability of cities and communities and suggests some solutions. Digital technologies in general and metaverse in particular can help going a long way in operationalizing these solutions. For example, as Christina mentioned in her uh, presentation as well, urban planning can be revolutionized by the use of metaverse and where the digital twins of the city can be used to simulate and optimize urban infrastructure, such as transportation system, water supply, energy networks, etc. Carbon em emissions can also be controlled by the use of metaverse, enable virtual working spaces, and so on. Next slide, please. Uh, I will not spend much time on this slide because uh, uh, because there I, I tried to present uh, as as many uh, use cases 
uh, with the relevance of metaverse and cities as I could. But the idea here is to max, uh, map some of the prospective use case cases in metaverse and cities with their potential towards contributing towards specific SDGs. For example, enhanced community in engagement uh, in cities powered by metaverse can support the SDG 9. Efficient public services provided by well, providing virt virtually through the metaverse can deliver on SDG 16. As a matter of fact, uh, Colombia just had its first court hearing where participants appeared as avatars and uh, in a virtual courtroom and the session lasted for two hours. Metaverse can play a significant role in providing new solutions to global challenges, such as social exclusion and inequality, and this contribute towards the SDGs 5 and SDG 10. Next slide, please. Finally, like other disruptive technologies, Metaverse comes with its challenges and certain policy implications. Some of these uh, are displayed on the screen, as you can see, uh, which can loosely group into four types or four themes. Those that are related to the identity in the Metaverse, those that are associated with the ownership and the use of digital goods and services in Metaverse, those pertaining to our immersive experiences and the way we transact and interact in the Metaverse, and finally, those affecting various enablers for our experience that is collective on the metaverse. We believe that these challenges can only be effectively addressed through a multilateral and multi-stakeholder collaboration. And that is the value proposition of DCO. And a human-centric development of metaverse and inclusive policymaking is absolutely necessary. I thank you and I look forward to the further discussions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ahmed. That was an insightful presentation. Really, really grateful for it. Um, it was particularly interesting to get into the economy, that part of it, the preliminary framework for sustainable digital economy, and also how the metaverse can power the SDGs, what the challenges are, key policy implications. Really very interesting. Thank you. Our third panelist is Dr. Okan Jirai who has more than 20 years of experience in management consulting, my world, in various industries. He has worked in Dubai e-government, Dubai smart government, smart Dubai office, and more recently in Dubai digital authority after its establishment. He is the designated leader for guidelines, guidelines on strategies for circular cities and city science application framework deliverables during the second phase of United for Smart Sustainable Cities initiative. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Radia. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and New York time, good afternoon to everyone. Um, Yes, New York Times, good afternoon, uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just, uh, before I start my intervention, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this um, very exciting and excellent event. I think Metaverse is a very important issue that all of us are um, working on at the moment, especially the participants who are in this webinar, I presume. In my intervention, I will be taking an economic perspective when it comes to Metaverse and hopefully highlight a bit of, at a high level, the, the economic uh, potential and opportunity that it poses and that we are faced at the moment with this new technology. If we think about it traditionally, actually, um, our economic activities were conducted mostly physically over the centuries. So we traded goods, we exchanged goods and services, as well as um, different assets uh, and resources as well uh, over centuries when the economies were established, uh, all the way from industrial revolution to the probably, I would say, to the latter part of the 20th century. And then when we look at the last, starting with the last two decades of 20th century and also the initial, the first two decades of 21st century, we started getting into actually digital economy. We utilize digitalization and digital transformation to transform our products and services, assets and resources uh, to the digital realm. Uh, but in, if you look at the digital economy in those probably in the past three or four decades, okay. we're talking about um, digitalizing or digital transforming um, the products and services, the assets and the resources, but there was a counterpart on the physical side for those. 
So we were almost converting the, the existing physical economic um, assets that we have, the products and services, and we turned them into digital. But as we look at this, we move into the metaverse and the, the, uh, the new technologies that we are today uh, embracing, we're actually getting into a new economy almost, which uh, we termed it as virtual digital economy. So what we are producing is actually today, I'm just gonna probably uh, use this, uh, the bottom part of it, by utilizing the existing frontier technologies, emerging technologies, what we are doing is, we're actually creating new virtual goods and services, virtual assets, and also virtual resources, which don't necessarily have a physical counterpart in the physical economy or in the digital economy. So this is a brand new area, actually. What we are doing is essentially we are expanding the economic pie in general um, all over the world. This is a huge potential that's ahead of us. We're just embracing it. We're getting into it. And it creates an enormous economic opportunity for all of us. So with the metaverse, actually, this is a new thing that's been enabled. So we don't only necessarily digitally transform the existing assets that we have, the existing uh, products and services, but we create new ones virtually. So this is one of the probably uh, trends that we will see as we uh, undertake metaverse uh, in our cities and nations. The second thing that I want to highlight is metaverse is also almost the container, the landscape, the new realm that uh, our digital activities and even physical ones will be conducted with their digital counterparts. So it's a very interesting actually trend. It's bringing several things on the table, which we did not necessarily have in the physical economy and the digital economy. So the, the potentials are to be honest with you enormous, both in the public sector and in the private sector and in the social uh, and environmental sectors as well. So we are faced with this enormous opportunity in terms of the, uh, the metaverse. Now what uh, Dubai has done is uh, in July, 2022, last year, Dubai has launched its metaverse strategy. And basically Dubai aims to be the number one in the region and also one of the top 10 cities globally in the metaverse economy. So we have definitely, uh, we are aware of the potential, the economic potential that Metaverse brings us and also the other uh, emerging and frontier technologies uh, and their confluence at the end uh, will help us capture this economic potential that we are faced with. And the top line objectives of the strategy are that uh, we want to quintuple or five times increase the number of blockchain and Metaverse companies in Dubai in five years. We want to create additional 40,000 metaverse supported virtual jobs by 2030, by the end of this decade, actually. And we also want to create $4 billion additional economic value uh, to Dubai. So um, quite ambitious as a starting point, I would say, for a strategy. And we will definitely revise these targets along the way. But we put quite uh, comprehensive targets for us. So we're actually utilizing all these technologies around Web3, VRs, XRs, ARs, and digital twins and metaverse in general. And we have five pillars as we move forward in terms of the metaverse strategy as a city. Of course, number one is to foster innovation, innovation in the public sector and also innovation in the private sector. So we're trying to um, undertake initial actually proofs of concepts, use cases, to foster innovation regarding metaverse. Not only that, but we're also taking a comprehensive or a holistic view of this uh, technology for us. So it's not just about delivering products and services, but we also want Dubai to become a, a talent hub almost when it comes to metaverse. And we want to cultivate talent. I think we're gonna go through this transition almost and um, embracing this technology, boosting the skills, upskilling people, so uh, as we deliver, as we innovate with the technology, we're gonna have to also upskill and boost the skills of our talent in general in the city and also attract new talent for it. Uh, and the third pillar is regarding uh, use cases. We want to actually, um, we've already started implementing use cases in the public sector and we want to, uh, we want to boost the, the use cases that we have as we move forward. So we're gonna be gradually actually um, upscaling and also implementing new use cases as we move forward. Uh, on the other side, we also need the, the right infrastructure, regulations and platforms that's gonna support the metaverse. 
So we're going to adopt and scale safe platforms, and we're going to also refine regulations and infrastructure at the city level uh, in terms of information and communication technologies and even others that are required as we move forward. So it's quite comprehensive in terms of the, um, the overall approach. And the underlying uh, presumption is to capture the economic value that I mentioned earlier and to increase the pie almost, the economic pie at the city level uh, in collaboration with all the stakeholders uh, that are in Dubai. But on the other hand, we are also very much aware of the challenges that we are facing. The slide here just um, identifies probably the broad categories of challenges that all of us are facing uh, as we undertake the implementation of metaverse uh, in our context. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm sure most of us are familiar with it, but I just want to maybe highlight a few of them. We're not sure yet how many metaverses there will be eventually. We don't know the end game. So interoperability is going to be very important. We need to be able to, as we, as we uh, create these virtual assets, virtual products and services, virtual resources, we need to be able to maneuver, we need to be able to um, uh, navigate among different metaverses if we end up in multiple versions in the future. So interoperability is very important. And of course, standards and guidelines will also support that. Uh, another area that I want to touch upon is probably the legal and regulatory side. That's very important for us, especially on the government side. Uh, it's, it's, there are several issues that stem actually uh, intrinsically from the metaverse technology. Some of the, for example, intellectual property uh, regulations and laws do not necessarily support all the issues. The existing uh, laws and regulations do not necessarily support all the issues that stem from metaverse. Uh, we talk about generative AI, just as an example. Most of today's uh, patenting and copyright, for example, regulations and laws um, pertain to probably uh, copyright issues that belong to someone, that belong to a person. But today, uh, generative AI is producing new assets, new virtual uh, entities, and their intellectual property rights are not necessarily identified in all the existing laws and regulations. It's just one example uh, of many that we are facing at the moment globally, not just in Dubai, but these are all global issues. And then when we look at technology R&D, uh, the technology is still in its uh, earlier phase. We're just embracing it. Uh, and Christina was mentioning earlier in her presentation, new technologies also that are, uh, that are concurrently happening as we speak, like quantum computing, all these other uh, ones, generative AI. I don't want to go to details, but all those are also happening. And the R&D also is happening with respect to those. So we're going to evolve almost with these technologies. We need to have this almost... Uh, I would say adaptive, agile approach to make sure that we can capture the economic potential that we are targeting. And I just mentioned that we're actually expanding the economic pie. We're creating virtual assets, virtual products, virtual services. If we think about it, they are gonna create also new markets for us. And competition, which is the last item on the right-hand side at the bottom, is going to become a challenge for us as well. How do we define even new markets? The markets, well, how do we define these markets within the context of metaverse? The physical economy, the digital, even we're, we're actually struggling globally today in terms of defining certain markets and competitive competition issues in digital economy. We're getting into a new realm almost of this virtual economy. How do we define markets there? How do we uh, regulate them? How do we ensure that there is healthy competition, consumer protection issues are uh, preserved in the right way? It's a long list of issues that we will tackle. Again, as I said, this is just a short list, but we are all faced with these challenges as we aim to capture the economic value that's ahead of us. I think it's going to be a very exciting ride uh, in general, right, as we move forward, but uh, it's going to be also challenging. We have to be ready. And we, have, we always talk about innovation in terms of technology. But we also have to innovate with respect to all these areas. We have to be innovative in regulations, in legislations, in security, in technology. So it's a, it's a plethora of issues that we need to address if we want to be successful in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Okan, very much. Um, really appreciate it for continuing this great discussion with that presentation. It was really helpful that you got into the numbers as well as you gave a broad historical perspective to set up a discussion on the economic potential of the metaverse. And I agree with you on your view of the metaverse as a digital container and the importance of touching up 
touching on upskilling regulation infrastructure to support platforms and capture economic potential. I will now introduce Teppo Rantanen, who is the Executive Director of Growth, Innovation and Competitiveness for the city of Tampere in Finland. Teppo spent quite a bit of time in my industry as well, working at Deloitte for 14 years, the first 12 as CEO of Deloitte Finland, and the last two in London as a member of the Global Technology, Media and Telecommunications Leadership Team. Teppo is running a few minutes late, so Sani Pontinen, I hope I'm saying your name right, Sani, from his office is, has been kind enough to step in while we wait for him. Sani, I'll hand the mic over to you. Thank you so much. It's lovely to be here. Uh, and greetings from Tampere, greetings from, from Finland. Um, today I have uh, two messages for you. Uh, first is we are building holistic metaverse city. And the second one is uh, that we want to do it sustainable way. And for that, we need AI governance. And now I would like to show you one slide about our thoughts. I take a screen share from here, over here. And let's see. So you see my slides over there, I think. So in, in Finland and also in Tampere, when we are talking about AI gov governance, we are not only talking about the threats and the law and the AI Act. Those are, of course, uh, re really uh, crucial issues. But we are also talking about the people how do we engage our citizens to this enormous uh, revolution, what is happening? Uh, who do we hear and who do we listen? Uh, citizens, stakeholders, or just ourselves? And then we need, of course, think about the ethics, the long-term uh, effects, the long-term uh, results, and also the short-term effects. And then we need to think about the technology. Uh, are we taking all the benefits out from the te technology, what it uh, enables at the moment? This is my strong message. Um, in the end, this is the question, uh, what kind of world we want to live in? And after a few decades, can we look into the mirror and ask, did we do the right thing? Thank you for your attention. And thank you, Sani. The question <laughs> of, we really appreciate it. The question of the kind of world we want to live in is a fantastic yes. one. Thank you for that. So we will move on to our fifth panelist, Christina Martinez. She is the Deputy Head for Smart Technologies for Communities at the European Commission. She worked as a Senior Administrator for Research in the Information Society Directorate General, where she led the Enterprise Interoperability Cluster for many years. Over to you, Christina. Thank you, Radia. Thank you very much to my fellow speakers. I'm very pleased to be here today with you just to uh, think about uh, indeed the challenges and the opportunities that uh, this new development of technology will bring to us. And while I'm uh, sharing the screen, um, I will definitely not repeat what my fellow speakers have already uh, said in a very convincing manner, which is that this technology comes with a lot of questions and we have not yet understood what AI and other similar technologies will bring to us that we're yet addressing another step, which will indeed be at the crossroad of all these technologies and therefore will multiply uh, all the questions that we will need to address. So um, to avoid a sense of repetition, I would like to focus on a few elements which perhaps have not been mentioned before. I'm representing the European Commission, which is the executive body of the European Union. And we have um, indeed a legislation and a policy environment that is already addressing a number of those issues. 
So um, we thought that it would be important for us to be the first in shaping the way in which we think virtual worlds could be developed and could serve the three Ps actually, because I fully support Christina's viewpoint that we need to uh, be very mindful of the impact of these technologies on the environment and on our capacity to deal with the climate change as a threat. But there is also a challenge for people and a challenge for our prosperity as a society. And so what I think is important is that we look at the three Ps and as the SDGs in general, although it will be very difficult, I believe, to address all of these SDGs through a technology, but definitely to be mindful of the impacts ex ante. So to avoid uh, perhaps, you know, taking a direction, as uh, Sipa said, that is not the one we would like it to take, and perhaps not to repeat the mistakes we've done in the past with other similar technologies. So the Commission is now trying to experiment on what this virtual worlds could be on top of existing technology solutions in cities. So we have taken uh, the decision to develop um, immersive uh, experiences on top of digital twins of cities that have already developed similar applications. And therefore, I will propose you a definition of uh, what is a virtual world in the context of a city that we call a cityverse, that is actually a hybrid one, which means that we're not creating here a pure virtual world, but we're very much linking this virtual world to the physical counterpart. Um, and therefore, we, we, we want to keep an eye on the impact of the one on the, on the other. So the proposed definition that we're tabling and which actually is part of the discussions that we are developing now in the context of the collaboration task group of this focus group on the metaverse is the following. A cityverse can be composed of a series of interconnected distributed virtual worlds, so sub verses representing their physical counterparts and synchronized at a specified frequency and fidelity. Each world can offer certain kinds of virtual goods and services, like games, social dating, online museums, shopping, concert, any, any activity that could be you know, added on top of existing activities in the physical one. And we'll also offer virtual environments like game scenes or virtual cities for two citizens and other stakeholders of the city represented as digital avatars. So you see the bold in the text. We're uh, very much linking this virtual world to the counterparts in the physical one. That's what we call the ecology of the, of the cityverse. So there are other characteristics like the use of big data, like the necessity, of course, to have a uh, leading edge technology for uh, immersive experiences. Uh, the use of avatars is very important and therefore brings another level of issues with regards to liability and responsibility of those avatars when, when, you know, when they're representing actual citizens in the cityverse. Of course, AI and modeling solutions, which will be helping not only rendering those virtual worlds in the most convincing and realistic way possible, but will also you know, take a lot of decisions on our behalf in a way that need to be compatible with our policy context. That's very important. And then no need to repeat what was said already by Oken that there will be a new, totally new economy based on, on those digital assets that we will have to consider um, and that will be created out of tokens and monetization of those assets. I'm taking here a picture that comes from a study, actually, um, that uh, in my view reflects very well what, what we want to do is we are creating a virtual world on top of a phys the physical one. So we're not going to look at the pure uh, uh, new environment, but we're going to take that reality with all the consequences it will bring in terms of um, what technology we will use, what are the ecosystem agents and uh, building blocks that we will have to deal with and how this will interact actually in the real world. So there is a, an ecosystem of solutions and of horizontal sectors that we will have to you know, put together. Uh, just to name a few, uh, there will be an engine managing interactivity, modeling, uh, digital twin visualization solutions, uh, blockchain technology, 
uh, but there will be also of course, this link with the physical infrastructure, we mentioned before the need for uh, high level computing capacity, storage capacity, sensing capacity also, because we need to understand what's happening in the physical world to reflect this in the Cityverse one. Uh, and then there will be new activities developed in the digital life that we will have to manage also from a policy viewpoint. So that brings us to a number of applications that I will not mention because I think they have already uh, been described, but, but the number of new elements which brings so many policy questions that we want to address. And this is why uh, we're launching a new activity called um, under the Digital Europe program, which is called Cityverse Pilots. And we will be calling actually for a number of projects that we will fund out of EU money in order to see and to experiment and to understand what are those states, what are those challenges and opportunities that cityverses will bring to um, our society. Um, a number of governance issues that we would like to study in this pilot are, of course, are there new norms and laws that are needed? Um, how do we manage all these different stakeholders, both physical and digital ones? Uh, do we need a new governance model for AI in this context? Uh, what this digital economy will look like? Um, how do we manage those marketplaces that will be created out of those cityverses? And then what are the trusted public bodies that will be also hosting a number of activities online that will reflect and not only responsibility, but also liability and the physical one. These are a number of uh, issues that we would like to tackle in a roadmap. We've decided to discuss this again in the context of the focus group on the metaverse, and we will be discussing not only pre-standardization issues, but also policy issues like this one. And here, just for you, um, a non-stable timeline of our ambition for the um, Cityverse actions. So we've uh, finished to prepare the call, which will be launched uh, in a few weeks, uh, the call for Cityverse projects. And then we will be working until the end of the year on the pre-standardization road mapping for the Cityverse. The Commission is also preparing a communication on virtual worlds with a staff working document describing a number of elements uh, that I just mentioned. And we will be continuing the funding of those activities because we need to federate existing digital twins in Europe. What we want is to have intraproal worlds, as we said before, and perhaps have a more sustainable instrument in the long term to support a number of common digital assets. So in a nutshell, the call will be released in a few weeks. There will be um, 15, millions, uh, 15 million projects uh, that will be uh, called for. The uh, information day that will give you all the information will be on the 23rd of May. And uh, the scope is, as I said, not only to start deploying some solutions, but also to study and understand what are the policy recommendations that the Commission and perhaps other levels of governance will have to consider. And with this, I will stop my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christina. You need to sign me up. This sounds really exciting. I'd love to do it. <laughs> um, well. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take you up on that. The, your presentation was really interesting. I love that you note the importance of thinking about what we don't know especially as we're in this nascent phase of the metaverse. Also love the proposed definition of the cityverse. That's fascinating, especially as it relates to these implications and the implications of create, creating a virtual world on top of a physical one. Um, thank you again for sharing the European Commission's activities, the, um, the ambitions in this exciting space. Thank you. Now we'll go on to our final panelist, my very good friend, Christina Buetti. She is ITU's focal point on smart, sustainable cities. She's a force of nature, serving as the counselor of ITU's telecommunication standardization sector study group 20, Internet of Things and Smart Cities and Communities, and the counselor of the focus group on metaverse at the ITU, as well as the TSB ITU focal point for Latin America. Without further ado, the floor is yours, Christina.
Thank you, Rabia. Good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining uh, this episode. Um, I'm actually delighted to participate in this panel, especially after hearing the different uh, interventions, you know, and having had the possibility actually to build on what it was mentioned before. So when we look at the metaverse, this you know new technologies or even new set of technologies that may have the ability uh, to change the way we live, we communicate, how we're gonna uh, look um, at reality in different contexts. Um, it's it, it opens up really uh, a lot of new opportunities, especially for cities and the way they have um, to deal uh, with challenges and also on the progress that they can make to achieve the sustainable development goals. I think today's discussion has certainly um, given us the opportunity uh, to consider uh, the various aspects of metaverse, the challenges, the opportunities uh, that this new technology um, is bringing, but also how cities can leverage on metaverse, uh, you know, for, you know, uh, increasing uh, their economy, as we have heard, for example, from the city of Dubai. Um, or, you know, how we can uh, look at the metaverse also in terms of, you know, a different evolutions in terms of um, social uh, communications. Uh, metaverse uh, is definitely uh, one of the uh, key uh, top issues that we are also discussing uh, in the ITU. So for those of you that are not familiar, the ITU is the International Telecommunication Union, um, is the UN uh, agency, specialized agency responsible for digital technologies. And uh, as a UN agency, actually, we are uh, working closely uh, with the ITU membership uh, which comprises 193 member states of uh, 900 um, uh, private sector companies and you know almost 200 academia members on how uh, we can help shape uh, the metaverse and the the journey actually on on helping to shape the metaverse started in Riyadh in March 2023, where we had actually the opportunity uh, to organize together with the government of Saudi Arabia, the first ITU forum on metaverse. Uh, this event was, you know, a great success. We had over 150 participants on site and online that contributed to the discussion along with more than uh, 30 speakers. Um, the event concluded with an outcome document which contains a set of policy considerations and insights that have been shared uh, during the event and I encourage you uh, to look at this document. The forum was also followed by the first meeting of ITU's new focus group on metaverse. Uh, the focus group on metaverse was established by the ITU uh, membership in December 2022 uh, unanimously. And uh, the, the focus group really aims to lay the groundwork uh, for international standards that can help create an underlying technology and business ecosystem. So the participation to the focus group is open to all. And this focus group really provides a unique collaboration platform uh, to build synergies to shape an open, interoperable, sustainable, human-centric and accessible metaverse. So by providing a space for global leaders in industry, civil societies, cities, the focus group will share and accelerate insights and solutions that will bring the metaverse to life. So I take this opportunity um, to encourage all of you and all cities that are actually um, participating in this side event to join the focus group. Um, the focus group during its first meeting has established eight working groups dealing with different 
uh, topics ranging from, for example, applications and services or architecture and infrastructure, interoperability, security, uh, regulatory and policy aspects or sustainability and accessibility, and has also created a new task group for collaboration, uh, which is actually uh, being led by uh, Christina Martinez and provides really actually the opportunity uh, for all to collaborate together, you know, in, in shaping a roadmap on CDiverse or the metaverse uh, for cities. Uh, the focus group uh, plans to hold a series of meetings in 2023. Uh, the second one will be held in Shanghai, in China, in July, on the 4th and the 6th, followed by a forum. Uh, we also plan to organize two special sessions. The first one will be held in Arusha, in Tanzania, in September. Uh, followed by the third meeting that will be held in October in Geneva. And then the second special session will be held on the 18th of October in Riga in Latvia. And the last but not least, uh, we plan to hold the fourth meeting of the focus group in Mexico in December. So uh, I would like really to encourage all of you uh, to participate to the focus group. You have the possibility to join us physically, but also remotely and contribute uh, to shape uh, the, the metaverse we really want. And what we talk especially about um, CDs, uh, you know, I'd like to share with you that we uh, at the ITU together with colleagues from uh, um, the United Nations World Tourism Organization, uh, we have jointly uh, developed an executive briefing on Metaverse, which is being launched today. Uh, this report has been contributed and reviewed by more than 40 experts from the focus group management team. And I'd like to, to take the opportunity to thank all of them for their contributions. This report provides an overview of the current states and future trends of the Metaverse, as well as some examples of use cases and applications in various sectors, so including health, education, CDs. And the reports also identifies some of the technical, social, uh, ethical, and legal issues that needs to be addressed to ensure a safe, inclusive, and sustainable development of uh, Metaverse. Now more than ever, it's crucial that Metaverse um, be built with a human-centric perspective uh, for people, for inhabitants, and see this, they have, you know, the opportunity actually to leverage on the metaverse to be able to provide better services, actually uh, to leverage and increase their economy, as we have seen, for example, from the city of Dubai that has, you know, certainly has great ideas on how to leverage and, you know, how they have also shaped um, their uh, strategy. Um, we, we also uh, want to collaborate with uh, other cities worldwide. So if you are a city that you're working on Metaverse or you have developed any use cases, please do share it with us. We'll we will be delighted to liaise with you. And uh, with that, um, as policymakers, regulators, uh, and inhabitants and citizen communities, we are really facing the um, infinite opportunities and huge challenges in the move towards uh, the metaverse. So we need to work together uh, to build an open and inclusive metaverse for all. And um, uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to write them into chat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. We appreciate the extremely useful information you've shared in your presentation. It actually very nicely leads us into the question and answer portion of our discussion. I see that there are already some questions in the Q&A. And um, if the speakers could please feel free to type your answers directly in the Q&A, so maybe we can get to as many of those as possible. For the audience, when you ask your question, please let us know who you are directing your question to. While you're doing that, let me start with, um, I see a few questions here that were directed to Okan, actually. So Okan, let me pick on you since I have a few directed to you and maybe we can go through yours. 
you had a, a fascinating presentation. So here's the first question from Heidi. What role would you see AI governance, sustainable and secure AI management playing and could be playing and will be playing as a solution for challenges that will arise from the use of AI going forward? He's from Finland, Heidi. Okay, I thank Heidi and also I thank you, Radia, for rephrasing the question. Um, I think we should be conscious of the fact that AI is one of the contributing technologies to metaverse. Uh, it's an important technology. It's not the only technology, and it's not the only um, the only let's say uh, legal and regulatory issue in general when it comes to metaverse. Having said that, if we can handle the regulatory side of uh, an ethical side of AI by itself, because the way I see it is AI and metaverse are almost overlapping. It's like a Venn diagram. They have certain common areas, but each also has its own area. If we can address the AI issues uh, and concerns uh, through the guidelines, through uh, ethical uh, issues, I think we will be able to solve at least a good portion of the issues that arise in the metaverse as well. That's going to definitely help. But having said that, having said that, there are going to be also particular issues, specific issues that arise in the context of metaverse. So uh, I think it's going to be, it's not going to be sufficient to address AI uh, regulatory issues. Uh, ethical issues on their own, but it's going to be necessary for us and very helpful and very beneficial as we move forward. Um, so today, for example, I was giving the example of generative AI. We don't have necessarily the best guidelines for generative AI. This is an issue that has especially come to surface this year. Now we can address it within the context of generative AI and take those uh, solutions to metaverse as well. But there might be new issues that arise in the context of metaverse. And I was just highlighting some of the um, generative AI assets, for example, or products and services that might require new approaches in terms of intellectual property rights. So here is an issue where AI almost introduces another additional almost concern within the context of metaverse. So I think so, we're going to um... have to tackle both. Um, to, to address our issues within the context of metaverse. So I, I, I agree with that. Um, I, I had another question for you, actually. That also comes from the chat. And um, I think that would be interesting as you're talking about this. How about um, the legal issues around the metaverse, virtual jurisdiction, avatar rights, that sort of thing, if you could just include that in your comments. Um, Quite frankly, there's a long list of maybe legal issues, again, that arise within the context of metaverse. If you look at actually some of those issues, maybe the common denominator, for example, the issue that was posed in the in the chat box I was that you were referring to, uh, virtual jurisdictions. This is an issue that we don't necessarily face within the context of physical economy, for example, because those jurisdictions are mostly uh, geospatially defined. The jurisdictions pertain to maybe physical, for example, boundaries uh, in some cases. But in the context of once we decouple or detach uh, the virtual economy from the physical economy, once we almost uh, remove that linkage, then we introduce another realm and new jurisdictions come into play. Uh, so for example, owning land within, within a metaverse uh, and the jurisdictions within the virtual land are completely different from the jurisdictions in the physical sense, in the physical economy. Okay. Uh, and those, again, introduce their own almost concerns. How do we then go ahead and regulate these virtual jurisdictions? Um, virtual lands, for example, uh, virtual assets. The issues can be addressed partially probably with the existing uh, regulations and legislations coming from the physical and digital economy, but we're going to have to address the additional ones again just like in the case of AI that I was mentioning. And I think we will be facing these issues as we undertake these implementations. We are not necessarily faced with all of them. Same thing for the avatar, for example, not just the virtual jurisdiction, but the avatar rights. 
we have human rights mm -hmm. because humans, you know, we all participate in the physical again realm. And yes, of we course. have certain rights. Uh, but then we have also inhabitants of these virtual worlds. We call them avatars. And again, we will have to define rights maybe for avatars in a different manner. We can't necessarily just take the, the human rights and we will probably be able to take some of them, but not necessarily we will be able to handle all the avatar rights issues by just referring to human rights, for example. Uh, I'm sure there will be new issues that come to surface. So these Agreed. are the challenges that we will be facing, I think, moving forward. And we're going to have to find solutions. We have to be very agile. Um, and regulations probably, you know, if you look at the real economy, the physical economy regulations, those are usually uh, quite stringent. Uh, they are strong regulations. But in the case of all these emerging technologies, frontier technologies, we have to be very adaptive, very agile. Uh, we have to come up with certain anticipatory regulations almost. Test them, trial them, and be very agile to make changes along the way. Uh, well we said. This in Dubai, in, in all the you know, emerging technologies that we have uh, implemented, be it blockchain, be it AI, we can't take the same approach that we take in, in you know, other sectors which are well established over the years, over the decades, over the centuries even. So we're going to have to be quite agile in the way we undertake these. I know I'm talking a bit high level, uh, but there's a plethora of issues when we talk about leg uh, legal issues and regulations. Uh, and it's going to be quite interesting moving forward. I agree. Thank you so much. Um, I want to zip over to Christina Martinez um, um, now because there are a couple for Christina that I think are super interesting. The first, Christina, is do you see AI governance um, being an extension or a layer on top of several other relevant governances that jointly could support the drive towards competitive business environments for metaverse creation? And the second, um, which is also quite interesting, is how does the European Commission intend to address SDG 10, reduced inequalities within the metaverse? Thank you. Thank you very much for these questions. I have to say that the first one could also I mean, it could be a, a PhD thesis. Maybe. Agreed. <laughs> but, uh, you know, an important question, but also very uh, probably complex. Um, I will try to provide a very simple, and, um, and I apologize already for, for the simplistic also answer, but um, we will have to deal with the uh, legal framework that we have. In, in Europe, we are proposing, and actually the Parliament and the Council are uh, currently negotiating a, a very important regulation on AI uh, that is precisely trying to build trust around AI and addressing what we called um, risks uh, around AI systems. So um, that's the first step. It will be, you know, the first legislation that will, um, um, you know, propose a number of applications that will have to be uh, treated differently, set requirements right. for AI systems, define obligations, by the way, for AI users. And, and also providers of technology propose a conformity assessment. So AI systems need to be trained in Europe so that they need so that we can check whether they're conformant with our legislation, which is, as you know, a very uh, mindful of um, principles and values such as uh, democracy, uh, equality, um, you know, the, what we call democratic values, basically. And that is, uh, it, I think, something that has already a lot of impact in the way that those systems can be designed and must be designed. And we also propose enforcement rules, by the way. So um, that creates clarity on the market. Of course, um, you know, technology like AI cannot be defined uh, in such a way that once it is being tested, you can be assured that it will never breach any rule. So exactly. there will be, you know, we, we heard before we need agility, we need adaptation, and we will have to carefully look uh, into the evolution of those systems. But we do have now a kind of governance in place. And then mm -hmm. indeed, um, I suspect that at the local level, uh, for instance, in, in some specific cases like in digital twins or in cityverse applications, there will be a number of additional norms that will be necessary. And I believe very much that this will have to be co-created among the different stakeholders in cities. And that includes, of course, the public sector, but also the private sector and the users and citizens, because we want to build a citizen-centric technology, nothing else, not less. 
So um, we have examples in Europe, for instance, uh, Amsterdam has been working hard on AI clauses, which um, help public authorities who want to procure AI technology to look into a number of requirements to make sure that it is indeed compatible with that legislation and, and framework that I mentioned before. So that is one way to address this issue, you know. Uh, but those, reg those clauses and, and these requirements have been co-created. So we, it, it was not imposed by the European Commission. It was not imposed by one authority. It was actually the reflection of a number of discussions that took place at different levels in cities because there are specificities in, at the local level that cannot be addressed by such a big framework like the EA legislation that I mentioned. So that's how I see indeed um, the you. fact that we need different layers, different um, levels of, um, let's say, action and reflection to come up with a governance of this technology that is suitable to these uh, principles of democracy what a thoughtful answer. Thank you so much, Christina. That was great. Um, just I wanted to wrap up with one more question. This one to Ahmad. Um, give you the last word here. How important, Ahmad, is multilateral cooperation in ensuring an inclusive and sustainable metaverse for all? Well, thank you very much for giving me the floor. And uh, I think this is the importance is evident from where, from us being here and discussing and exploring uh, how how to shape the metaverse and how to uh, how to design an, a human centric and and in uh, an inclusive one. Uh, so uh, the importance is uh, is there. It's well established. Um, and multilateral cooperation will play a very vital role in developing an inclusive uh, and sustainable metaverse. For now, I think I can think of three points. Um, of course, there would be many, many reasons for that, and they are known. Um, uh, the first reason is the governance. Uh, so we need to learn from our mistakes or the lessons or whatever we call it in for, from the governance of the previous generation of internet and technology. We have uh, done a lot of good work, and we have uh, we have we might have missed out on a few opportunities as well. So we need to develop a principles-based framework or frameworks for a safe, open, accessible, inclusive, competitive, human-centric, centric metaverse, and a few other words we can add i mean all the all the issues that we have faced uh, with the previous version uh, that protects people and societies from any potential harms now if this looks a bit uh, uh, negative then the second thing is what has worked well uh, through collaboration uh, uh, with the previous technological waves is that we have done well on interoperability so we came together we developed standard we made the innovation interoperable um, and but now the innovation is very fast um, right. and it is very sporadic. Hence, we need to double down our collective efforts and not to miss out on, on the interoperability goals. And ITU um, has already started work and we are a part of all uh, this exercise. Um, so so on, on, on a positive uh, side, I think we have to uh, build on, uh, on what we have done and we have to double down our efforts. And finally, uh, is the most important of all, which is sustainability. Uh, so we have a collective responsibility to ensure that while fulfilling our current growth ambitions, uh, we do not jeopardize the interests of future generations and the planet. Uh, and when we talk about sustainability, yes, planet, sustainability, climate is a big part. But then as I um, uh, uh, try to present in the, in the framework, we have a vertical of people, we have a, a planet, and we have businesses. So we need to ensure sustainability uh, across all or or uh, uh, other verticals as well so we have to we will have to join hands to fulfill this responsibility that we have um, and you know dco uh, the corporate the c is cooperation and collaboration uh, so we we are a very very new fresh organization um, we've been there for a couple of uh, years now uh, and we are trying to collaborate and uh, we are trying to uh, cooperate to have an uh, um, an inclusive and sustainable digital economy. Thank and you. that's why you are the perfect person to ask that question. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. I would love to thank you. I would love to continue with this really fascinating discussion, but we're going to have to leave it there. Please join me in giving a big thank you and a virtual round of applause to our wonderful panel.
I would also like to thank the International Telecommunication Union and the government of Saudi Arabia for bringing us together for this important discussion as part of the UN's Science, Technology and Innovation Forum. Finally, thank you to the audience for making this a robust and engaging discussion. We appreciate you choosing your time. You have a lot you can do with your time, choosing to spend it with us. We really appreciate that. I would like to hand the mic over to our friend, Victoria. And again, thank you all. Wow, what a fantastic session today on the metaverse. Uh, Ms. Radia, thank you kindly for moderating and to all the speakers for sharing their expertise with us today. What a fantastic session. Now, I would like to give the floor over to Mr. Shin Gak Kang, Chairman, ITUT Focus Group on Metaverse, to give us the closing remarks. Over to you. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining today's webinar on a very important and timely topic, leveraging the metaverse in cities to achieve the sustainable development goals. Today's webinar was organized as part of the UN Science, Technology and Innovation Forum and provided a platform to discuss the opportunities and challenges of the metaverse. The invaluable contributions of our expert gave us a comprehensive overview of the transformative potential of the metaverse for cities. While the metaverse is still in its nascency, we can already see great potential for government, consumers, business, organizations, and the cities to support the achievement of the SDGs. As the metaverse evolves, we all need to ensure that it is interoperable, inclusive, and secure for the benefit of all. The ITU is playing its part by providing an impartial, collaborative platform for all experts to build the future metaverse together. I encourage all interested experts to join the ITU focus group on metaverse and make their contribution. The focus group offers a venue to work to get toward a standard that could help shape the underlying technology and the business ecosystem to encourage market entry, innovation, and the cost efficiency. And if you want to follow the progress of this group, then I encourage you to follow the IT website on Metaverse, www.ito.int slash Metaverse for latest update. Thank you everyone for your attention and I wish you a good rest of your day. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Shingak, for your closing remarks. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Muath al rumai Director of International Negotiation, Communications, Space and Technology Commission, Saudi Arabia, to give us the closing remarks as well. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Victoria, and uh, I thank Claudia for uh, good management and moderating the discussion. Uh, excellencies, distinguished panelists and guests, Good evening from the lovely city of Riyadh, where the time is now almost uh, 10 p.m. But uh, we indeed uh, joining uh, as such, you know, a healthy discussion of sharing, uh, you know, uh, lesson learned from the different stakeholders from different regions. So it's very glad uh, to be here with you and to co-organize such event with the ATU, the specialization agency the UN Specialized Agency for the ICT. So as, as mentioned by His Excellency, the Ambassador Mr. Abdelaziz, we in the kingdom already have created enabling environment to foster innovation and to introduce new and emerging technologies, products and services into Saudi markets. And basically last year, uh, we have launched the Emerging Technology Sandbox, which basically aims to create flexible environment to allow launch of innovative business models, solutions, services. And at this moment, actually, uh, there are many global technology and local companies already conducting some good experience and uh, business models within the framework of, of that sandbox. As we heard from many of the speakers today, uh, the metaverse offers a great opportunity to radically transform our lives, the way we work, live and communicate, and to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. 
So we look forward to further opportunities to cooperate with you. I mean, with all stakeholders and of course with the ITU and the wider UN system to, ad to advance our common goals and to build a better future for all. We, we will continue to be actively involved and invite all government, industry, academia, civil society, and other stakeholders to join us on this metaverse standardization journey. Thank you again for every interesting contribution from all the experts, and I look forward to working with all of you in future events. Many thanks. Wonderful. Thank you kindly, Mr. Muath, for your thoughtful closing remarks. And many thanks once again to all the speakers and participants for joining us. All of the presentations and the recording of the session will be available soon on the event website. Please stay tuned to our future digital transformation webinar series episodes. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a great week. The webinar is now closed. Thank you very much.